Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a few days since we've taken a look at the garden, so I'm going to walk you around, show you some of the projects we've been working on, and uh, we'll check out a few of the things that have gotten a little bigger since the last time you saw them. guys like I said Tina and I have had several projects going on here on the homestead and I'm gonna take you around we're gonna take a look at them but there's a lot of things that have grown up probably gotten a little bigger since you saw them the last time and uh, some new things we're gonna find along the way so let's just get into that footage and we'll go take a look at the garden all right guys we usually start these little walking tours around here at the main garden so that's where we're gonna go ahead and start today so on the outside row there you can see the flat dutch cabbages are doing great we've got a whole row of those all the way back to the back and uh, we've got some lieutenant broccoli up here now it's getting ready to start forming heads and we're hoping we're going to be able to cut some off before it gets too hot and it tries to bolt on us but uh it's usually pretty good for taking the heat so we're uh, looking forward to a decent broccoli harvest here in a week or so but uh got some uh jalapeno peppers up here and some jalafuegos but uh we're just uh looking forward to getting into these peppers man they're uh, they're doing great here but we'll scan over here and we got beans and beans and beans so let's see these first two rows here are uh, um, green jades and uh, the center row is a mix of green and yellow and these outside rows here the two shorter rows here are uh, let's see those are rock door wax beans then the two the two long rows here they go clear to the back those are a half runner beans they're a green bean but uh we'll just continue on around here we've got uh, some volunteer squash growing there by the onions onions are looking good they're coming up there uh you'll hear the term bulbing they are just getting ready to start bulbing. That means when they start cracking the soil next to them because they're getting ready to rock and roll and swell up those bulbs. But bulb now and swell up. So we uh, now's the time when they start to swell like that that you get your fertilizer to them and uh, help them all you can. Uh, we got the sweet potatoes here. Guys, we got these buckets topped off. That was one of the projects we were looking forward to doing. But they're topped off and we got a little bone meal in them. So. Uh, just did that the other day so we haven't seen the results yet but I'll give you a good look at them here and then you can see once that uh once that bone meal and stuff catches on these things will go through another big growth spurt and about take over these buckets so I'll give you a look at them now and then in a week from now or so we'll come back and uh, you'll be able to see the difference so we'll keep heading on down through these onions there's a half runner beans again out beyond that still green beans to the back of the garden here.
Okay guys, real quick, we're going to run down through the snacker onion beds, but uh, they're starting to bulb also. They are a little bit younger than the ones over in the garden, but they are starting to bulb up too. You can see the extra white popping out around the tops of them, but these are an intermediate day onion, another intermediate day onion group that you saw us grow last year. Those are, those are an intermediate. They're meant for growing here in the kind of central stripe down through the middle of the U.S., about zone seven. But uh, you want to grow, uh, you want to grow intermediate days around here or long days. But I wanted to show you they're doing well. These are an intermediate white and a little something different for us. We still have plenty of onions left from last year. So we're going to try these, uh, these white onions, see how they do. They're supposed to be sweet and pretty good. So we're going to give them a try. But uh, so far they're looking good. See over here we got some uh, broccoli and new heads on it. Glad to see those. There's a decent little head back there. But pull you back out here. Got some uh, cabbages and some more Brussels sprouts going on in these beds. These are growing a little slower than the ones over in the main garden because this is a little more shaded. We save this area usually for later in the season. We like to grow melons and stuff over here because, uh, let's see, this tree casts a shadow down across the beds and uh, we have some plants that really enjoy it. We can grow the cucumbers without them getting too, uh, too hot or going sour on us. But uh, it's also nice for uh, keeping these uh, brassicas cool later into the season. So the cooler we can keep them, the less chance they'll bolt on us. They may mature a little slower, but it's nice to have them not bolt. We can grow, grow brassicas later into the season. But we'll keep rolling around here and uh, to show you this uh, beet bed. You saw us plant these beets from the pelleted seeds, but the beets are filling in nicely. So it wouldn't be too long before we have a beet harvest. I would say a couple weeks or so. Here's the broccoli you saw us plant from seed outdoors. We direct sowed these, so they did real good. They're filling in nice and uh, growing strong. They're going to be behind the other ones, but. I can show you, see how they're in the broken shade versus the sunlight. So this broken shade helps the brassica stay cool and uh, lets us get away with planting broccoli from seed this late in the season. But uh, we'll follow these along and we'll see how they do. Back here to the pea, so let me shut this down. We'll jump over to the other side of the raised bed garden and I'll pick you up there. All right, guys, I'm gonna run you through the last leg of the raised bed garden here. We got the peas that's one of the four beds of peas we got growing that's probably the youngest bed right there but uh, it's starting to flower out and we'll be looking forward to peas on it too but this is a bed of roma tomatoes on the outside and it's got some uh, yellow cherry tomatoes down the middle but those are really coming on we got some uh, epsom salt on those the other day too and it's really helping bring them on got the watermelon bed it's doing well and uh, what looks like weeds growing in between them those are actually uh, ground cherries so uh, don't fret too much we don't usually let a weed stick around here too long so if you see it growing it's probably because we wanted it there but the watermelons are coming on strong so we're looking looking forward to that and uh, up front here you see some yellow blooms and stuff those are the cantaloupes so there's cantaloupes along that front edge of the bed and they are already starting to flower so We'll be looking forward to those too. Here's the last bed we got. We got the radishes, got some spinach, more radishes. Let's see, I'll sneak around through here and we'll take a look because I want to show you these radishes. They're getting ready to come out of the ground. Got a, just a nice line of them. Got them spaced out about perfect where they're just touching each other. And uh, that's the way we like to have them. So, we got radishes on both ends of the bed. Got some uh, picker spinach in here. We just uh, kind of been picking at it, putting it in salads and stuff. So not really enough there to do a big pot of spinach, but it's enough to dress up a salad. So we get these radishes out of here. Um, we'll probably pull the spinach at the same time and uh, we'll throw something else in here. You'll see that as we, as we empty a bed, we fill it right back up. So a lot of these beds will grow two or three different crops through the year. And uh, more than happy to have you guys follow along as they do it. All right, guys, right here at the sweet corn now. We moved away from the raised bed garden over here. Give you some perspective of where we're at. But we're over here at the sweet corn patch. 
And we got a couple rows of squash going down the front. We got a couple hundred squash plants. But those will hold us pretty well and uh, keep a few others fed as well. So sweet corn is up and doing good. And uh, waiting on some of it to fill in. We put some shorter, shorter corn in the skips. But we got the gourds going on along the back here. They'll grow between the back of the garden and the fence. But there's several of those up. Maybe we'll sneak around there and take a look at those. But the squash is doing good. The sweet corn is doing well. We got uh, one type of squash here. You can see the leaves yellowing on it. They're, they're right here in this patch. The little patch starts about there and runs down to there. But uh, those leaves there are yellowing up. And when you see that, I can tell you what it is. It's a uh, nitrogen left over. This was a sweet corn patch last year. And this ground is awful hot. We, we put a lot of fertilizer to our sweet corn. So this ground is awful hot. So when these came up, the first leaves scalded. A little too much nitrogen and direct sunlight will cause that yellowing there. But as you can see, the plants adapt pretty quick. And let's see, we'll show you the yellow leaves on them. But the new growth on them is bright green and uh, ready to roll. So even though they've, uh, they've scalded on the outside leaves, the new growth is ready to go. So the plant can adapt to the higher nitrogen but it couldn't at first, so it put on these yellow leaves. We'll go through and uh, probably snip those out of there, but just let the plants rock and roll from there. But it just seems to be these few right along here. This uh, We planted one type, and when we ran out of seeds for that, we moved to the next type. So whatever type that was, when we were there, just didn't like the higher nitrogen. So we'll take a look on down through here. The squash is looking pretty good. Got to get in here and do a little weeding, but... Uh, Look up through the corn, back here behind the corn. Hopefully you can see the gourds starting up back here in the back. And then you can see where the corn changes. There's a line where the corn changes. The corn down here is about twice as tall and twice as thick. Guys, this is our hybrid corn we planted here on the end of the garden. So all the ends of the rows are planted in hybrid corn. It comes up strong and uh, very few skips in it. So. We're really happy with it. We need to do a, renew our seed supply a little bit and move a generation forward on a, trying to hybridize it into a, a hybrid that'll uh, breed true. But uh, just need a few more generations of uh, breeding it together before we start you know, selecting for different genetic traits. It's a whole big convoluted, uh, confusing thing to explain, but um, just trust us, we'll go along and uh, this is just the hybrid corn project and you'll see it from year to year, but uh, this is what we're hoping the other corn we looked at in the other garden from South America will probably get bred into this at some point, but uh, we'll have to see. We want to see how it does before we uh, commit to it. Alright guys, we're over here at the wood raised boxes now. This is our older raised bed garden, but I uh, wanted to show you the new strawberries are uh, doing well and the uh, well, it looks like weeds, the ferns coming up through there, or the ends of the asparagus. They're coming right up through the strawberries. Let's see, I think we got some uh, basil planted in there. That basil will be coming along here soon. Got some more strawberries and asparagus mixed together. They're looking pretty good. Let's see. I hate to even guess what's in here. So, these are, uh, these are herbs. Just trust me, in the barrels are herbs, and uh, we'll get some information from Tina here soon. I don't want to show you what's in those next two boxes. So we'll skip on down here and uh, we'll take a look at the, these are pickling cucumbers in the barrels here and uh, some carrots. You guys always enjoy the carrot harvest, seems like. Got some more pickling cucumbers and some more carrots over in that bed. That's kind of a mix of uh, older carrots and some new planting. So we'll have to see how that one does. But we've got plenty of carrots from the last couple of years, so not too worried about that. Not trying to hide anything. I just don't want to spoil the surprise, so don't look too close at those. But we got the cardboard and stuff torn out of the tomato patch. Guys, we're getting ready to plant our tomatoes in. We'll go over and uh, we'll take a look at some of the ones we seeded. But we also have some we picked up from the nursery, so it'll kind of be a mix of both. But we're looking forward to getting these... Uh, tomatoes in here. We're going to get this ground prepped up. We need to uh, do some mowing and uh, pick up some grass clippings and bed them in with. But 
they seem to like that little bit of nitrogen boost up front and then it works to keep the weed suppressed so we'll uh get some mowing done give you a look out through the orchard the asparagus bed you saw us uh, add add some new soil and get that buried in a little bit deeper if you didn't see that video it'll be in our gardening uh playlist i'll leave a link to that at the end but the asparagus is doing well so we're gonna head back up to the raised bed garden there and uh we'll wish you guys well but the tomatoes are getting ready to go in boxes are doing well and we may or may not have planted the sweet potatoes but that's a video coming up for this weekend i hope you'll stay tuned for it and uh we'll put it up then all right guys that's about gonna wrap it up for today's video we hope you enjoyed walking around taking a look at the gardens um, lots of new stuff going on here and uh, we're looking forward to uh, getting ready to do a little harvesting here before too long but we appreciate you guys coming by the channel if you enjoyed the video hope you'll give it a thumbs up and uh, leave us a comment down below if you would uh, ask a question your questions and comments and your thumbs up those are interactions with the video that tell youtube to show our videos to more people and the more people we can reach the better so we really appreciate you guys coming by the channel if you like the content please uh subscribe down next to the subscribe button is a bell if you hit that bell that'll send you a notification whenever we release a new video so that's a great way to keep up with the channel and uh just see what we're up to next time we let a video go so we uh we appreciate you guys coming by the channel we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up we'll catch you in the next one